So everybody will, uh, we're going to get ready to get started here in a minute. So everybody in the back will have a seat or come forward so we get started. Test, one, two, three, four. Everybody hear me in the back? Hello. Make sure everybody hears me. All right. Good evening. Trying to get everybody's attention, please. Hello. That means you, Mike. All right. If you want to please stand, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening, everybody, and happy new year. All right, we're going to get started. Um, sorry for running late. Technical difficulties with the internet. Hopefully, it's going to work well for the night. Um, apparently, the internet's out in the building, so we're having to use my phone as a hotspot. I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but so far we're up and running. Um, real quick, for anybody new members or anybody that's new or is not a member, any guests in our audience, if you'll just raise your hand. Any guests or any new members in the audience? Nope. All right, for those who don't know who I am, um, not sure why, but I've been around for a while, but uh, my name is John Knott. I am N4JTK. I'm the president of the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and multiple other titles I want to go into at this point in time. Um, Michael Cauley, uh, W4RL, is our vice president and Hamcation general chairman. Uh, Bobbin, where are you at? Bobbin is our secretary, W4KBW. Anna in the back of the room is our treasurer she's waving back in the back um, and then we have about six board members around uh, we have james bob c trying to look around uh, dean is in the back um, frank is in the back am i missing anybody that's here ed 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 i know ed's here maybe he went outside for a second Ed's here. Ed's also one of our directors. Um, anybody that's here that took the test tonight? Did we had three people? Two people pat pat three people tested, two people passed the tech, one person didn't pass tonight. So congratulations to those two newbies. All right, we're going to, a couple of things, and we're going to go into our break kind of quick because I'm not 100% sure how long the presentation is going to be, so we want to make sure we give them a, an ample amount of time. Um, how many of you guys went to the Christmas party? Excellent. I hope everybody had a great time. A huge round of applause to Anna and Christy for putting on another great Christmas party. Um, lots of prizes and lots of um, – Door prizes and lots of uh, centerpieces even went out the door. So 13 tables this year, which is great to have everybody back again. Um, looking forward to what comes for 2023 at the Christmas party. You never know. could be something new and exciting. Um, and Toys for Tots. Amazing amount of toys were donated for Toys for Tots. Uh, two boxes of uh, toys, and that was overflowing. There was even toys on the on the ground around the boxes. So uh, appreciate that very, very much. Um, and it was a great job by everybody bringing toys in. Um, let's see. Uh, lots of awards. Uh, we'll actually go over some of those awards uh, probably next month because there's a couple individuals we still have to give awards to. And I don't want to blow the, the surprise too much. So we'll go over who all won what next month at next month's meeting. Uh, winter Field Day. Talk about Winter Field Day for a few minutes. Um, let me ask this question. Did everybody get the listening post? Had to do it a little differently this time because that was nine megabyte file right there. Even a PDF nine megabyte file. 
So we uploaded it to the website, which we normally do anyways now, and we just sent the link out so everybody can download it onto their computer, print it if you wanted to. Um, you didn't have to, but at least you could review it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about field day. Lamar's Lake Monroe Amateur Radio Society has invited Orlando Amateur Radio Club and its members to come and help us, help them with field day, winter field day. How many participated in winter field day before? Okay. How many don't have any idea what winter field day is? Which if you don't, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, how many have been wanting to participate in winter field day but haven't had any club activities to do so? I know a lot of you guys have emailed me in the past. Maybe you're not here tonight. But here's a great opportunity. If you haven't participated in winter field day, but have participated in summer field day, imagine a scaled back operation in much cooler weather in Florida, okay? That alone should be a plus. The weather should be a plus. If you are from Florida, have been here for a long time, you know how our summers are, especially the last full weekend of June. Um, there are places that you don't wanna sweat at normally when you're out in Florida weather outside in June, you don't sweat in those places. Well, usually in winter field day, you don't. In fact, sometimes you have to put jackets on for Florida because it's pretty cool. Um, but anyways, it's a scaled back operation, much like field day in summertime, but uh, we do it, they do it outside at a park. Um, it's called Trocasso Park, and it's an at 104 North Moss Road in Winter Springs. It's right next door to the Winter Springs Police Department. And for those of you guys who are interested, it's right down the street from HRO. So come play a little bit of Winter Field Day, stop by HRO, pick up a new toy or two, have a great weekend. Um, all the information was on in the newsletter, other than exactly how, you know the stations and what how their stations are going to operate. My understanding, if I'm not mistaken, there will be two stations set up for winter field day. Again, it's a scaled back operation. They will be operated out of trailers that Lamar's has. So you'll be out of the wind, out of the coldness. It might be cool in there yet, but you'll be out of the wind and everything. And we're looking for operators to operate for a 24 hour period, one hour time slots, okay? Not looking for you to do two hour time slots, three hour. If you want to sign up for it, you're more than welcome to, but a minimum of one hour each time slot to operate. Make as many contacts as you normally would for a field day or any other contest and stuff, um, and help Lamar's out and participate in, the, in their event. They'll be using their call sign, um, and most of the equipment, we'll, OERC will also have some equipment there also that they've asked to borrow um, to help them out. Um, there is the website link to uh, sign up for is in the newsletter. Um, if you did not get it, or if you need the link itself sent to you by email, just send me an email. I'll send it back to you. It's not a problem. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of signing up yet. A lot of people are still trying to figure out what they're going to do. But the dates is January 28th and January 29th. It's a Saturday and Sunday. It runs just kind of like field day does, you know, Sunday, depending on what the weather is and what the bands are doing, maybe you start breaking down a little early or maybe the bands are wide open, the weather's great, you can keep operating. Um, and so um, from 3 p.m. Saturday to 3 p.m. Sunday. And then of course there has to be some time to set up and to tear down. There's also time slots available on the sign up thing to do that also. Don't need a lot of people, again, it's only two stations, but. I know they could use some help getting antennas raised and uh, everything set up and running by three o'clock. They also mentioned that food will be provided or dinner will be provided Saturday night. Not sure what that's gonna be yet, but you know, another reason why they kind of want an idea how many people are gonna be there so that there's plenty of food for everybody that comes and uh, helps participate in winter field day. This is something that OERC has not done in recent times. I can't tell you from, way back when what might have happened. But in recent times, because the the growth that Hamtation has done over the years, there's a lot involved in it. And we're only two weeks away from Hamtation at that point. And trying to organize another event on top of it has been very difficult. 
I welcome anybody that's wanted to volunteer to organize OERC's Winter Field Day participation. I haven't had anybody do that yet. Still willing to do that for future winter, winter field days. If you're interested in now organizing it and taking the ball and running with it, we'll support you 100%. It just, I don't, we don't have time to one. Again, being scaled back, there's not a lot of stations. It's much cooler. It was at nighttime. There's uh, some great uh, other amateurs there from the uh, from the Mars, and we had, we had a good time for the couple hours that we were there. So please consider it. You want to get away for a little bit? Um, we in Aries, we just had a, uh, a fun day this past Saturday. Uh, pretty much just a, an event to um, help people with the projects, amateur radio projects they've been dealing with. And we had a good turnout for for uh, the weekend after of uh, Christmas and also being New Year's Eve. I think a lot of people are just trying to get away from company, family, whatever might be in town. You know, three hours away is a good time to, you know, to unwind a bit. But again, if you have any questions, please uh, see me during the presentation, during the break, whatever the case might be, if you have questions. But we're, we're hoping to help them out quite a bit with Winter Field Day. Um, you wanna come up real quick? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> come on up for a second. Talk real quick about Summer Field Day and the help that OERC was able to give Lamar's and, and the growth that you were able to do over on Field Day weekend this past summer. Just on, on Summer Field Day, how the growth that Lamar's had incurred from OERC helping them out for uh, Summer Field Day. Summer. Summer Field Day last year, I, I guess most everybody knows, but maybe not all, but Lamar's, uh, well, each club kind of wanted to uh, get some of the work farmed out and get together, and so uh, I'm the Field Day Chairman for Lamar's. Uh, so, you know, with all this going on in the world and everything going on, we thought, gee, what a great time for inclusion and take the good parts out of all that. That's a, that's something good to be. So we, I was insistent upon, and it didn't take much insisting, that we have a combined field day. And so John talked about the results of that. So we had, we had a uh, hundred and fifty percent on the, on the roster. So we we've had maybe seventy people attending our field days. Uh, without the clubs together. But when we put the clubs together, our sign-in was 150, 180 people came out there. And we, and it was a great time. It was really a great time. And I'm hoping we're gonna do Summer Field Day again, at least in some manner, because uh, uh, at Lamar's, this was great. We had a lot of new friends made. We had a lot of old friends that reacquainted, and uh, and it was just awesome. Talk about a multiplication factor or uh, one of those kind of, you know, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the score. Oh, we only came in third. So, oh, 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 holy cow, was it ever increased. Yeah, well, we had, normally Lamar's operates 4A, that means four transmitters, and the A means it's a club station, club or a group station. So this year we had, we went up to 5A, and uh, there was an interesting station that was out there. Uh, how many of you seen that in QST and the December issue? Okay, well, you might want to pick it up. It was really impressive. So we had two of our visually impaired hams in Lamar's, Many, I bet you a lot of you know Dave, W4CI, big CW op. Yeah, and um, and his friend uh, KF4YEY, Tom, both of those guys are, well, totally blind, and they are great ops. So they used to operate our CW station and just kind of fold it in with everybody, but, you know, they wanted to do it on their own. And, and here again, this resulted in a huge points gain. Th those guys are excellent ops. So they proposed a blind guy CW station. We called that the BGCW station. Well, they called it that. And, you know, and it was 
it was just great. Uh, we had uh, the news crews came out, and as soon as the, the news reporter discovered really what was going on, called the station back and said, I don't want to just do an interview here. I want to do an all-day on-the-air thing, and we'll have it on the 5 o'clock news. We got like six minutes of tape coverage, and it was really, really impressive. So it, there's just a lot of good going on. So what was the score? Um, we were the number 10 out of about 90 in the 4A group the years before. This year, with with all everybody getting together, we were we were number three in the five A category. That's that's number three in the nation, and we did we did one hell of a job. Everybody we did a heck of a job. It was great. So we got ten it was ten thousand something points, which is more than double what we had the previous year. It all because we have worked together. And it was a blast. Thank you. So the point being is when the clubs get together, a lot of good things happen, a lot of fun happens, numbers increase, um, and we help each other out. So uh, for Winter Field Day, I'm hoping to do the exact same thing, provide Lamar some assistance with Winter Field Day. Um, it gives the opportunity that for those of you who don't have HF stations at home, or not even a uh, general class or extra class, you can still come to Winter Field Day and participate and operate a radio for the weekend. Um, so please come out and, and uh, help the clubs out and stuff. So let me move on from that. Um, if you have questions about Winter Field Day, please feel free um, to come and talk to me about it. I'll answer everything I can about Winter Field Day. If I don't know the answer, I'll find out the answer. Um, but it's only a few short weekends away. Uh, Michael, Temptation, 2023. All right, everybody hear me? All right, Temptation 2023 is fastly approaching. Um, it's less than probably 37 days away, around there. Um, so the biggest thing is we still need volunteers. We're really short on volunteers. Uh, so please, if you have not volunteered, go to the website, uh, hamptation.com, look at the top link for volunteers, and volunteer some time. Uh, just a reminder, you volunteer four hours, you do get a free ticket. If you volunteer eight hours or thereabout, uh, we do feed you for the day. Also, you get to donate your hours toward a 501c3 or a ham radio club of your choice for them to get a donation. Um, some exciting things coming up um, this week. Uh, tomorrow night, I will be on Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp, actually uh, announcing the winners of the Carol Perry Educator of the Year Award and the Gordon West Ambassador of the Year Award. Uh, so tomorrow at 8 p.m., uh, you can listen to that. Um, you just... Um, Google Ham Talk Live. It will take you to a web page called Speaker, and you can uh, listen to it there. Um, another big announcement tomorrow on there will be um, a, a couple new sponsors we have. I'll go ahead and tell you who they are, but you'll have to listen to the podcast to find out uh, what one of them is donating. Um, first one would be BX Engineering has come on as a bronze sponsor. Um, so they're donating... Uh, some prizes to us. The big one is ICOM America has come on as a platinum sponsor. Uh, platinum sponsor. Um, and I will let it out. They are donating our grand prizes for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's just not one item. It's packages that they are donating. So if you listen to the podcast tomorrow night, you'll find out what's in each package and what radios they are. So um, that's the two biggest things. Also this week, uh, we will be updating the forms list on the website coming up. Uh, the prizes will be starting to get listed up there also. Uh, so everything, just stick to uh, hamcation.com. It will be getting updated almost weekly, if not 
daily, depending on what comes out between now and temptation. I think that's it. All right. And I will be on another podcast coming up on the 15th, I believe. It's in the calendar. I will be on Ham Radio 2.0 um, with Jason. Coming up on, it's a Sunday, let me tell you. 15th, it was the 15th. So I will be on that one also, uh, give them more updates about Hamcation. Uh, so we'll send out a message on social media also about that one, to, um, when to watch it. Right. Somebody had a question, I think. All areas. Um, the biggest ones are, um, <laughs> if I ask my committee, everybody needs volunteers, and the biggest one's everyone. Um, I do know um, talking, uh, talking needs volunteers yet. Um, logistics still needs some volunteers. Um, I know IT needs volunteers if you have an IT background. Um, I can I can tell you real quick. It was in the newsletter, but okay. So the biggest ones that right off the bat that needed some volunteers was security, talking, tailgate, logistics, on-site tickets, and IT, just to name a few. Right, um, but pretty much if you go to the website and where it says volunteers, click that. There's actually a, some blue tabs at the top that will give you a description of what each volunteer position kind of entails. So that way you're not getting into something that you don't really want to do. Um, and then on the same page, you can sign up to become a volunteer. So what will happen is you'll provide your contact information, the days that you are, you are available to um, volunteer. Um, and the position that you want to volunteer in. Um, when you submit that, it goes to Rick, our volunteer chairman, who then forwards it to the committee, those particular committees, say security, whatever the case might be. The security chairman or the chairman of that committee that you volunteer for will then contact you about, um, we tried it one year to put all the, all the dates, all the positions, and all the shifts on the website. And it got so convoluted, it was just ridiculous. And like, okay, they can sign up for the day and the position, and the chairman are just going to have to find out what hours they're available for because each area has different requirements. Um, security starts the earliest, and they stay the latest. Um, so they require the most volunteers. You know, everybody's a little different. The biggest thing to remember, folks, if you want to come out to Hamcation and you want to sit there and, and have a good time on the weekend, all you have to do is work four hours. All right, and you get a free ticket that's good for all three days. So you can volunteer before Hamcation starts and enjoy the weekend at, at Hamcation with a free ticket, or you can volunteer during Hamcation if you wish also. We get, Hamcation cannot run without volunteers. Michael has said that. We've said that many, many times over and over. Um, if you are a part of a, um, a social club or a uh, civic club or you know – uh, students that need volunteer hours, um, any of those type of things, they can also sign up. You do not have to be a ham to volunteer. That's the big thing to remember. Um, for example, uh, Frank last year, he's a member of the Knights of Columbus. So members of the Knights of Columbus came out and volunteered over the weekend, and then OERC turned around and made a donation to uh, the Knights of Columbus for their volunteer hours and stuff. Uh, based off the hours that they turned in. Same thing can happen in any of the church organizations, civic clubs, any of the case might be. You don't have to sit there and be a, a ham. So if, you have, if you're part of one of these organizations that's looking for some funding, you know, um, and it, just so everybody knows, it is a portion of the profit that Hamcation makes is what pays for those donations and stuff. Higher the donations or higher the um, profits, the better the donations are. And stuff. So it varies every year what it could be. So uh, as we found out last year because of, you know expenses went up. But the whole thing is is you know for you guys who have who are members of the club and want to volunteer, you're in a great position to do so. There's a lot of chairmen in the audience tonight. Um, you know more than willing to talk to them and find out. Hospitality also needs uh, people. Um, commercial, I'm sure we could use some more volunteers and commercial vendors uh, area. Uh, there's, there's, 
no no end of it. So please take the time to take a look at it and sign up. Um, and it's coming close. It's going to be here before you know it. We are now uh, five weeks away from Camp K, or about five and a half weeks away from Camp Cation. So it's it's going to be here before you really know it. All right. Anything else? Any other questions on Hamcation? Michael, do you have anything else? Or the biggest push right now is, is for volunteers. All right. Um, let me go around real quick to the board and the other clubs. Um, Michael, did you have anything club related or anything you want to talk about? Anna? Anna's in the back. Uh, Bobbin? Did you have any? Bobbin's sleeping up front. Um, Bob C? Nothing. Ed? Nope. Uh, James? Good. Sleeping also. Uh, Frank G is not here. Frank T. Anything? Okay. Dean. Oh, good. All right. Go around to the clubs. Um, if you can come up front, if you have an announcement for your club, please, so that way everybody can hear it on the microphone. QCWA. Yeah, I'll make it quick. QCWA. Uh, we're doing real good uh, in the past year or two. Things have picked up a lot. Our meetings are on the second Thursday, so that's a week from tomorrow. We meet at the Perkins at 1 o'clock. That's a block from HRO. It's on State Road 434 in Winter Springs. So QCWA meeting next Thursday, 1 o'clock, and uh, we have a great time. We have a, we have a repeater now. Uh, courtesy of Ken Lyons, it's, uh, the antenna's up at about 200 feet. And so we encourage you to check in to use our repeater, 147.195, uh, plus 600, 103.5, the standard stuff. But we have a, a Tuesday evening net. It's after the 7 VHF traffic net. So it's at 7.30 on Tuesday night, 147.195. You can check in from a long way away now. Isn't that right? Thanks, Ken. Uh, yeah, 103.5. It's the standard Orlando PL. Thank you. Hope to see you there. All right. Lamars. Anybody from Lamars? After that, anybody from CERT? Uh, Mike Bivens? We'll get them lined up now so we can make it go a little quicker. I'm Jim Robar, KB2CUX. Uh, tomorrow night we meet uh, at 400 North Edgemont in Winter Springs. We're right off of uh, 434, and we're one block west of the police station getting an ID where it's at. Uh, I don't know. Some of you folks I know uh, know Stan Wood. Stan's going to do our program tomorrow night, and Stan is a refurbisher, collector of anything from – the 1920s and up, and uh, I, I don't even know. He said he'd surprise us, so whatever it is, it'll be good. So thank you. All right, Mike. After Mike, uh, Clark Conestard, any announcements you can make? Anything? Uh, after Clark Conestard would be CFRA. Orlando CERT uh, for City of Orlando residents. Uh, we are, I call us, us the eyes and ears of the City of Orlando during a, an event like the two hurricanes that we had. We basically manned the uh, shelter, or you don't man the shelter, you man the EOC, uh, so that hands, and Paul was with me as well, uh, do the, um, so any events that happen around the City of Orlando, they get radioed in. And we can send it to the uh, head of the EOC so they know what's going on. Obviously, we're not active because of uh, we're not in the hurricane season, but uh, come May time frame, we'll go ahead and fire back up. We still have our uh, weekly nets on what the 14676 repeater, thanks to the OARC that we can use that. So if you care, uh, 7 o'clock at uh, Wednesday evenings, tune in and you can hear us and get more information. Um, radio scouting, or no, I'm sorry, hold on. Clarkona CERT, was there anything Clarkona CERT had? Anything? Nope, okay. Uh, CFRA, hand the, pass the baton to Bobbin, who woke up. Nope. I'll tell you what, that repeater that. Uh, a little louder, Bobbin, closer to the microphone. <laughs> that uh, QCWA repeater has a heck of a footprint. I'm Bob W4KBW. Uh, 
<laughs> president of the Central Florida Repeater Association. We're a couple, about 20 members. We meet the last Wednesday of each month at Perkins, eight, eight month, of each month at Perkins at the corner of University and Forsyth. Get there around six o'clock. We have our little meal at seven o'clock. I have about a five, 10 minute meeting. Nothing big going on. Repeater is downtown Orlando, Colonial and I-4 area, 443075. It's uh, analog and fusion. Membership for the club is $12 per calendar year. If you and your spouse are members, it's $18 for both. All right, after Bobbin was radio scouting. Hello, everyone. Uh, Ken, Ken Ham for MDJ. We have 25 scouts signed up to do the radio merit badge at Hamtation. It's sold out in three days. We've already had to start another class a week later. Uh, we have scouts coming from Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville, and even Crestview to come and take this. We only do it about six to seven times a year. Uh, so they're doing very well on that, so we're focusing on that. And the goal is to hopefully have about three to four of those scouts actually get licensed, which would be great. All right. Uh, the ham, ham radio? Rod, did you have anything? Nope. Quarter week signal? <laughs> nope, okay. Uh, Amstat's not here. Deers. Lara. Similarities. Frank T. Good evening, my name is Frank, KD4EZW. I'm the president this year of the Seminole County Aries organization. Um, if any of you live in Seminole County or near it and wanna participate, this year we're starting our training cycle over. So we're gonna go through all the NIMS classes and all the basic training that you need for um, Seminole County Aries participation. Uh, we meet on the third Thursday of the month at the 100 Esslinger Way in Seminole County, which is the Sheriff's Office, off of 1792. Um, and our repeater is 147.090, And on Monday nights, every Monday at 8 p.m., we have our uh, Seminole County Aries night. So if you'd like to participate, please join and listen in. Thank you. All right. Nobody from Osceola Aries. Then I'll tell you, um, Orange County Aries, real quick. Orange County Aries meets on the second Thursday of the month now. At the this coming month, there's a change in the venue. It will be at Winter Park High School. Um, we're pairing up with Winter Park High School. There's a group of youth there who are working on getting their amateur radio license. So we'll have a discussion with them plus a presentation. Um, that information I just got today, and it's going to go out to those Aries members tonight in an email, but if you are interested, send me an email. We, you don't have to be a member to come, but you're more than welcome to, but just let me know that you're coming or I can give you the information of where it's at uh, as soon as um, soon as you send me that email. I will, one more thing, I, Joe, Joe wants to come up in just a second here. Come, you come up, you can come up um, about uh, something he has up here, but also I wanna make sure that for Hamtation committee members, there is a meeting this Saturday I will give you the location um, in an email tonight. It is at the EOC. It's just going to be a different room. Uh, Orange County EOC is under construction right now, or remodel, I should say. So, But we will be meeting in a different room. But I'll send you the information tonight. Just got it confirmed also today. Hello, everyone. Name's Joe, KQ4AID, a uh, new operator this year. Um, you'll see back here on the table a gator case. I have access to several of these. There is no charge. If you have an interest in one or two of them, please leave your name, how many you want, whether one or two, and your email address. And let me see how many people have an interest. And I'm um, getting with you guys. I'm going to get with Lamar's tomorrow. And I'm going to see if I can give them away to uh, all our fellow hams. Good deal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and take our break. We're gonna take a, about a 10 minute break. Be back at 8.20 and uh, we'll get started with the presentation.
All right. If everybody could just give me your attention for just a second. You don't have to sit down. You, you could just give me your attention for a second. Or maybe 30 seconds. Or a minute. If I can have everybody's attention. I'm gonna be. A, <clears throat> we're gonna have commercial, uh, commercial rehearsals here in a minute. Can you hear me now? All right. We're, we're not unsure why our guest has not appeared on Zoom yet. Okay. He he um, he was given the information, said he was going to be here, so on and so forth, wherever the case might be. So we can do one or two things: continue socializing which maybe you guys haven't had a chance to get caught up with everybody for a while, might be a good thing. Two, we could break a little early and head out early. It's up to you guys. We could, or three, if anybody knows any comedy acts, we can have them come up and have an open mic night. So, so if you, we're not sure what we'll do is Ed will get in touch with them and see about rescheduling for later and stuff. Um, it is something on the ARDC grants, uh, which is a huge benefit for, for amateur radio operators slash clubs, okay? Um, so it's something to be really interesting to watch. Uh, but in the meantime, if you guys want to socialize, you know, finish up the coffee and donuts, that type of stuff. If you have questions for me or Michael or any of the board members, or please feel free to, this is your chance to hopefully have our undivided attention uh, you know, stuff, huh? We can do that. You have the tickets? Uh, ah, he usually sticks them up front. So let me ask the question: Did everybody get a blue ticket? Did anybody not get a blue ticket? Rick, can you give Joe a blue ticket? Anybody else need a blue ticket? So we got a couple prizes. As always, the way I do it, when I if I draw your number, you come up and have, you can select what you want. Um, we have a, a little pigtail SO238 to a mini UHF. Um, this is great for if it fits on your handheld, uh, you can put an outdoor antenna or a or another coax or an antenna on it without breaking off that little tiny SMA connector. I'm sorry, that's SMA. Um, so this is great if you have a little handheld that works for that. If you're a ham radio operator and you don't have one of these, what's wrong with you? Wire strippers. Everybody needs wire strippers, okay? Um, always good to have an extra set. And the last thing, just something different for the night. So it's kind of hard trying to figure out what people need and what people could use. There's a little HT antenna. It's a um, two meter, seven centimeter uh, antenna. That's a Diamond SRHF 40A. It's a super flexible antenna. Okay. Uh, not quite the rubber duck. It doesn't bounce back. If you bend it, it bends and it bends back. Okay. But you got to bend it back. You can bend it, you can twist it, you can tie it in a pretzel if you want. You want to really make everybody wa look at you strange, tie it in a pretzel, put it on your radio, and then hold it up and talk on it. And people go. So those are the drawing items for tonight. Um, some people came up and asked about the podcast tomorrow night. The podcast name, again, is Ham Talk Live. Okay. In this case, in, in this particular case, it's Ham Talk recorded because it was recorded several nights ago. But it's broadcast for the very first time tomorrow night. It's on um, Speaker or Spreaker or something like that. Um, but if you just Google Ham Talk Live, it will take you to his website. Okay, it'll pull it up and you can click on it. It will start at 9 o'clock? 8. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So... It, it's also up on YouTube. Um, I don't know if it does it live on YouTube, or I think it pops in there after it broadcasts live the first time on his particular pod podcast channel. It's also downloadable if you listen to podcasts later. 
if you have one of those little mobile devices and listen to podcasts, just put in Ham Talk Live and you can download the latest episode on it. Um, if you go to the website at 7.59 p.m. tomorrow night, you're not going to see it. At 8 o'clock, if you don't refresh your browser, you're not going to see it, okay? But once it broadcasts, it's there forever. You can go back and listen to it anytime you want to. But if you're trying to listen to the very first part of it or very first podcast or broadcast of it, you got to make sure that you refresh so you can catch it uh, when it when it pops in there. Okay, so um, I and I will tell you if you're list you're if you're trying to want to listen particularly for the prizes, you don't want to miss it. Okay, you do not want to miss what uh, the prizes are going to be that um, is being donated. Okay. So it's huge. All right. Um, everybody got tickets, blue tickets? Blue tickets? All right. We'll do the quick drawings. We're not going to push you out or anything. You're more than welcome to stick around, chat, socialize, have questions for us, please. Six, five, two, seven. Ed. Your choice, Ed. Next, Kristen Wires. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, James. All right. Here's a hint. Stand over this way. All right. Don't rush. Don't knock anybody over. But stand over that direction. That seems to be where the tickets are coming from, right? You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to get HRO to donate us uh, 605, but. Six five three three, front row. Okay, I lied. Front row this time. All right. That's it. All right. So we'll stick around. Um, if you guys have questions for us, you know, if you have questions now, you can answer or ask them. Um, or you can come up and ask personally. It doesn't matter. Uh, stick around, chit chat, have a good time. Um, we'll start kicking people out about 9 o'clock, though. <laughs> so thank you again apologize for whatever happened to our guest speaker we'll uh we'll definitely sit there and get that rescheduled for you oh i'll tell you let me tell you real quick what next month is before you run away all right next month february the 1st 2023 7 30 p.m here at the central florida fairgrounds our guest speaker will be john lear dally Victor Edward Three, India Papa Sierra, Parks on the Air, Three Practical Methods of Successful Activations. If you are a Parks on the Air person or are interested in Parks on the Air, it'd be a good presentation. <laughs>